This is Lesson 8 in our Calculus 3 series, Quadric Surfaces. A quadric surface is the graph of a second degree equation in x, y, and z. And this is a three-dimensional version of conic sections in the plane. So our second degree equation in x, y, and z in general looks like this. But we're going to concentrate on six basic surfaces that each reduce to a simpler form. And it's going to be enough for us to study just these six basic types because we can get the graph of the more general equations by rotating and translating the ones we're going to look at. Now a key aspect of sketching these graphs is to use traces of the surface. A trace of a surface is the curve obtained by intersecting the surface with a plane parallel to the coordinate planes. So for example, you're going to set x equal to a constant and see what curve you get by intersecting that with your surface, set y equal to a constant, and set z equal to a constant, and see what traces we get. And that's going to help us sketch the surface. So let's take a look at the first example. We're going to look at an ellipsoid. It's of the form x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared is equal to 1. And you should recognize this as an extension into three dimensions of an ellipse equation. The equation of an ellipse in two dimensions is just x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. So this is a natural extension into three-dimensional space. And note that if a equals b equals c, this is a sphere. So let's take a look at the trace when x is equal to 0 here. When x is equal to 0, if we plug 0 in for x, this term drops out and we're left with y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared is equal to 1. And remember, x equals 0 is the yz plane. So we have this ellipse sketched in the yz plane. That's our trace when x is equal to 0. Keep in mind that saying this ellipse is in the yz plane, or the plane x equals 0, means that for all the points on this ellipse, the x-coordinate is 0. That means this curve is not moving forward and back in three-dimensional space. It's only changing in its y and z coordinates. Now let's take a look at the trace when y is equal to 0. So that's an ellipse in the xz plane. x squared over a squared plus z squared over c squared is equal to 1. So notice this ellipse is coming forward and back in three-dimensional space. It's intersecting the x-axis at positive and negative a and intersecting the z-axis at positive and negative c. Since we found this trace by setting y equal to 0, we know that the y-coordinate is equal to 0 for all of the points on this ellipse. So it's in the x-z plane. And similarly, when z is equal to 0, we get an ellipse in the x-y plane. And by using the traces, you can see how we can get an idea of what this surface looks like. We can certainly put some more traces in as well. For example, if we wanted to do some more horizontal traces where z is equal to a constant, we would still get ellipses in those z planes. And that would look like this. And that's our sketch of the ellipsoid. Now let's take a look at the elliptic paraboloid. Here we have an equation of the form z equals ax squared plus by squared plus c. And let's start by letting x equal 0 and looking at that trace. When x is equal to 0, we get z equals by squared plus c. b we're given as a positive number, and I've chosen for my sketch here, I've chosen a positive c value, and that lifts this up by c units. So here we have a parabola in the yz plane. Now let's take a look at y equals 0. y equals 0 gives us z equals ax squared plus c. Again, a is given to be positive, c I've chosen positive, and that gives us a parabola here in the xz plane. Now notice that I've drawn this parabola differently than I drew the one in the yz plane. Based on the way our axes are set up here, when you're looking at a parabola in the yz plane, the red parabola, we're looking at it straight on. So I have the heights on both sides of the parabola to be the same. But the purple parabola is in the xz plane, so I want to show that this is coming forward and back. And to do that, I want to use a little bit of perspective. So notice the angle at which the x-axis is coming. That's about the same angle we have between the front and back parts of the parabola. 
So I'm trying to use perspective here to show that this parabola is moving forward and back in our three-dimensional coordinate system. And now in this case, since I've chosen C to be positive, Z can't equal zero. So I'm choosing a Z trace to be Z equals some constant K, which is bigger than C. As long as K is bigger than C, then when I subtract over the C, we get something that's positive, and this is going to be an ellipse. And so that's our trace there. And this is the elliptic paraboloid. The traces are parabolas in two directions and an ellipse in the third. Next is the hyperbolic paraboloid. As you might guess by the name, we're going to see some parabolas and some hyperbolas. Now when x is equal to zero, we're left with z equals negative by squared plus c. We're given that b is positive, so z equals negative by squared is a downward facing parabola. And for simplicity, I'm going to choose c equals zero here, so there's no shift up in this sketch. And the parabola we have here is the parabola z equals negative by squared in the yz plane. Now when y is equal to zero, we're left with z equals ax squared plus c. a is given to be positive, so we have an upward facing parabola in the xz plane. And again, c is equal to zero. So we've got this parabola here. Now before we head on into horizontal traces, that is z equals constant traces, I think I'd like to do a couple other traces with either x equal a constant or y equal a constant. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. By putting in some traces y is equal to a constant, y is equal to k, we have z equals ax squared minus bk squared plus c. Again, c is equal to zero. Now k is some constant, k squared is positive, b is positive, this is negative. So what we have is our original shape z equals ax squared, but now it's being shifted down and at the same time it's moved over to the plane y equals k. So we have these parabolas, this is forward and then hitting the red parabola going back, forward, hitting the red parabola going back. I've dotted the, the parts of the parabolas that are going uh, behind the yz plane, so it would be a little bit easier to see what's going on here. Now let's take a look at some x equal constant and see what we could make of the sketch. With x is equal to a constant, our parabola is, now our red parabola is essentially moved forward and up. It's moved up because we have this a k square term there. And so the surface we're getting is a saddle surface. It's got downward shaping parabolas in one direction and upward shaping parabolas in the other direction. To give you a better idea of what this surface looks like, I've included the MATLAB graph here. And we can see that when we have z is equal to a constant, we're going to have hyperbolas. And then the corresponding part on this side would look like that. And say for a negative constant z value, we'd have something like this. And the corresponding curve on the other side as well. And those would be our hyperbolas that we get from our traces when z is equal to a constant. Now let's take a look at an example of a cone. The equation here is of the form z squared equals ax squared plus by squared, where a and b are both positive. We're going to start by letting x equal 0 and y equal 0, and then we're going to take some traces where x and y are equal to constant values that are non-zero. So with x equals 0 and y equals 0, we see that we get pairs of lines. And now with z equal to a constant, we're going to get elliptical shapes for our horizontal traces. But notice if we let z equal 0, a and b are positive here. That means x and y must be 0. That's only one point, the origin. And you can see that from the drawing here. So we're going to talk about z is equal to k, which is um, not equal to 0, and sketch a couple ellipses in there. So that's the basic shape of our cone. But notice if we take some x or y traces that are not equal to 0, we'll get hyperbolic curves. And that's our cone. Now let's take a look at the hyperboloid of one sheet. Here our equation is of the form ax squared plus by squared minus cz squared is equal to 1, and a, b, and c are positive. We're going to notice that we have vertical traces that are hyperbolas and horizontal traces that are ellipses. With x equals 0, we have this hyperbola in the yz plane. 
And with y equal to 0, we have ax squared minus cz squared is equal to 1, and that's a hyperbola in the xz plane. That's the blue one. And with z equal to 0, or z equals a constant, we get ellipses. And that's our hyperboloid of one sheet. And the last one of the six basic surfaces is the hyperboloid of two sheets. Notice here for our sample equation that we have ax squared minus by squared minus cz squared equal to 1 with a, b, and c positive, so that x squared is our term with the positive coefficient. And in that case, our traces x equal a constant are only going to exist when k is greater than 1 over radical a or less than negative 1 over radical a. And those traces are ellipses. The traces in the other directions are going to be hyperbolas. Starting with y equals 0, we have the hyperbola ax squared minus cz squared is equal to 1 in the xz plane. That's this red one here. And with z equals 0, we have ax squared minus by squared is equal to 1, and that's the hyperbola here in the xy plane. Looking at other y equals constant traces and z equals constant traces gives us these curves. And now let's look at the x equals a constant traces that exist, again, for k greater than 1 over radical a or k less than negative 1 over radical a. Those are going to look like the green curves that I have here. And so what we're getting from our hyperboloid of two sheets is a surface that has two parts, each kind of cup or bowl shaped. And keep in mind when looking at other equations of this form, we may have the coefficient of x squared to be negative, to have a negative sign, and the coefficient of y squared to have a positive sign. In that case, then, we'll have the hyperboloid of two sheets with the cups sitting along the y-axis. Similarly, we can have the same for z. So notice that we have the positive coefficient in front of the x square here, and our cups sit along the x-axis. We could say the same type of thing for the hyperboloid of one sheet. Notice that our z term is the one that's negative here. Well, we could just as easily have a negative x term or a negative y term. Notice that with z, the z term negative, that z axis is the direction in which that hyperboloid is shaped. If we had a negative by square term instead, we would have the hyperboloid kind of sitting along the y axis in the y direction. And similarly for x. So these equations that we're giving you are the basic shapes, but keep in mind that the shapes that we're drawing are based on where we see these negative signs. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple of examples. Sketch the appropriate traces, then sketch and identify the surface. We've got 2x squared minus y squared plus 3z squared is equal to 1. So we're going to start by first setting one of the variables equal to 0 and see what we have. So we start by letting x equal 0 and we find the hyperbola negative y squared plus 3z squared is equal to 1 in the yz plane. And that's our red hyperbola here. Now let's take another trace. Let's let y equal to 0. We see that with y equal to 0, we get an ellipse, 2x squared plus 3z squared is equal to 1. That's the one here where y is equal to 0. But we also notice that with other constant values for y, we're still going to get more ellipses. So if we have y is some positive constant, we're here. Same thing if it's a negative constant, we're back here. So we've got more elliptical shapes. So, so far, this is looking like a hyperboloid of one sheet. Let's also take a look at our traces with z equal to a constant. And so we have our green hyperbola here in the xy plane. And so this is, in fact, a hyperboloid of one sheet. Now let's take a look at one more example. Let's, again, sketch the appropriate traces and then sketch and identify the surface. We have z equals y squared minus x squared plus 2. We start with our trace x equals 0, and we see we have z equals y squared plus 2. It's a parabola in the xz plane. It's shifted up by 2 units, so that's our red curve there. And then letting y equal 0, we see that we have z equal negative x squared plus 2. We're shifting up 2 units in the z, and our parabola is starting there, facing downward. Letting y equal other constants, we see that we have other parabolas, again, attached to the red curve. And this is one of our saddle surfaces, 
which is a hyperbolic paraboloid. And we're going to end our lesson on quadric surfaces here. But keep in mind that when you're sketching these surfaces, you definitely want to start by using your traces. That's going to give you the basis for the shape of your graph. And this concludes lesson 8 on quadric surfaces.